Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today I have got four delicious slow cooker recipes for you all using ground beef. We are going to be making some delicious chili mac as well as some spaghetti and meatballs. I've also got a really great meatloaf recipe and some Tex-Mex stuffed peppers. So let's go ahead and get started. So all the recipes that I'm going to make today are out of this complete slow cooker cookbook by America's Test Kitchen. I also used this book in my last slow cooker video and I would highly recommend this cookbook. The thing I think that's unique about this particular cookbook is that it uses a lot of fresh ingredients. Um, I'm obviously not opposed to using like <laughs> cream of chicken soup and stuff like that. I use it in plenty of recipes. But if you're looking for a cookbook that uses more whole foods, um, this is definitely a good resource and so far all of of the recipes that I've tried have been fabulous. So I'm going to make stuffed peppers and these are some Tex-Mex stuffed peppers in the slow cooker. So I've got four green bell peppers. I just bought these because they were less expensive than the red and yellow ones. I've got some cilantro, some onion, six cloves of garlic, some frozen corn, one slice of white bread, some Monterey Jack cheese that we'll, we will be shredding up, some tomato paste. Um, I like ordering this from Thrive Market because it comes in a jar and then once you're done you know taking out the amount you need you can put it back in the fridge I've got some chili powder some olive oil um, the recipe specifically calls for minute rice so I have that some chipotle peppers some milk just a quarter cup of that and then some salt and pepper and I also um, got some peppercorns from Thrive as well because I need to refill my pepper grinder the other thing you'll need is ground beef which I totally forgot to mention because I have it off to the, <laughs> the side here because I was um, thawing everything out so I'm going to cut the tops off of the bell peppers obviously since these are stuffed peppers we want to try and keep them intact it's been a long time since I've made stuffed peppers so I'm looking forward to this recipe and then it also says to use um, the tops of the peppers and we're going to chop these up and microwave them. That's another thing about this particular cookbook is that it really does utilize the microwave when possible, which I think is really awesome because obviously if you're using a slow cooker, um, you know, sometimes you don't wanna get pans on the stove dirty too. Sometimes there's no way around that, especially if you need to like cook ground beef, but I'm just going to look at this one. Oh, there we go. I was like, what's going on with that pepper? All right, so I'm just gonna continue to get all of these chopped up. Okay, so I have all my pepper top chopped up. So next I'm going to chop my onion and add that to the bowl. And then we're also gonna add some seasonings and some olive oil. This I think is a pretty um, budget-friendly recipe to make especially with like the rice and the ground beef i know ground beef actually is i don't know i feel like when i was a kid i can remember like my mom always talking about how ground beef was like the cheapest you know protein whereas now i feel like chicken breast is and ground beef is like <laughs> at least in my experience when i go to buy ground beef at the store it's always way more expensive um, and chicken so that's another thing to keep in mind but you can obviously you know get um, wait until there are sales and stock up and you know stick it in the freezer I also have a brand new garlic press from OXO which is one of my favorite kitchen brands and I haven't even tried this yet so you guys are gonna test it out live and in person with me we'll see how it works let's see Oh, I like that. Yeah, the other one I had was like, I don't know, it was like coming apart in the dishwasher. I actually don't even know if I should be putting stuff like this in the dishwasher, but you know, that's just, that's kind of how I roll. <laughs> well, I would say that works pretty well, honestly. I got it on Amazon. I feel like it was pretty affordable, so I can put a link to it if you're looking for one. I just feel like the OXO products have never let me down and you know I have my beloved salad spinner from them as well so okay I'm gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil just eyeball it all right and then we need two tablespoons of chili powder I'm gonna give this a stir to make sure all of the veggies are coated and I'll microwave this for five minutes okay so I've got a different bowl here and I'm going to start working on the meat mixture so one of the I guess unique things about this cookbook is 
that it uses this technique a lot of um, mashing bread with milk and adding that to the ground beef mixture to kind of keep it moist. Um, I've seen this before like done with meatloaves but never in any other recipes so I thought that was kind of interesting. Well like meatballs and meatloaves I guess. Um, so then after I mash that I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of salt and then I'm going to refill my pepper mill. I love that I can get these like little bags of peppercorns on Thrive because they're super convenient to just be able to refill. Perfect. Okay, and then I need half a teaspoon of pepper. This pepper mill is pretty awesome because you can crack the pepper into this little um, like base at the bottom and then you can measure it out, which I think is just like the coolest thing ever. So I need one cup of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. I just happened to have this in my fridge so I didn't have to buy any, so that was nice. I assume if you can't find Monterey Jack, I would just use cheddar or probably even use mozzarella or I think pepper jack would be good too or Colby Jack. Cheese is pretty forgiving. You can kind of use whatever you have. All right, I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna add in my corn, just one cup of frozen corn. And then I need two teaspoons of chipotle, so I'm just gonna kinda eyeball that. So here's what those peppers and onions and garlic look like after I microwave them for five minutes. Super fragrant, you can tell they're very flavorful. This is probably gonna melt the cheese a little bit, but that's fine. Hopefully I can fit my, my beef in here. So this is the mixture that's obviously gonna go inside. Um, the stuffed peppers. Okay, so I have about 12 ounces of um, ground beef. This is 90% lean ground beef, so I'm gonna add that. And then the last thing is just three quarters of a cup of instant rice. It's been a long time since I've purchased <laughs> minute rice. I haven't bought that in a hot minute. Okay, so I'm just gonna stir this with a fork. I think personally when you're making any type of ground beef mixture, that's the easiest way to do it. The fork kind of helps keep the mixture light and you know doesn't like compact and squish it together the other thing i do also sometimes if i'm making like a big batch of meatballs or meatloaf is you can use your kitchenaid mixer that's super helpful as well but this is smelling really good okay so the next thing that we need to do is stuff our bell peppers so i'm just gonna try and divide this as evenly as i can between um, the four peppers and it looks like i might actually even have a little bit more filling than i need so it says to kind of like pack or mound it on the top of the pepper i assume it will you know cook down obviously a little bit as it sits in the slow cooker. Another tip I found also is if your peppers don't sit up, you know, in the pan, you can trim just a tiny little bit off the bottom of the pepper, like horizontally, and that will give it a flat surface to sit on. It's been a while since I've made stuffed peppers, so I'm looking forward to trying these. I feel like the last time I made them was several years ago, and I uh, think I made like some type of like low carb pizza stuffed peppers maybe or something like that. All right, well that actually ended up being ended up being perfect. I got four peppers out of that, cool. All right, so I have my slow cooker liner here. I'm using one of the smaller ones because I thought that these would fit and I think, I think they will. I would have put two in there so I could check. Um, but the recipe says to put a third of a cup of water in the bottom of the slow cooker and then you just kind of stand the peppers up in there just so they, these are obviously not gonna fall over because they're gonna be packed. They're gonna be packed in there pretty well but if you had a larger slow cooker you might have have to kind of lean them up against one another. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is just shred up another quarter cup of the Monterey Jack cheese. I'm actually just gonna shred the whole thing because who doesn't need shredded cheese in their fridge, right? Okay, so we're just gonna put a little bit of this on top of each and then at the end, when it's done cooking, uh, we'll garnish it with some cilantro. I probably don't wanna put the cilantro in there at the beginning because It'll really kind of, I don't know, like the flavor of cilantro isn't probably gonna <laughs> be good after it's been in a slow cooker for that long. But anyway, here are the stuffed peppers. Um, honestly, that was a bit easier than I anticipated it was gonna be. So you can cook this for four to five hours on low or three to four hours on high. I am going to cook it on high. So when it's done, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I'll show you the stuffed peppers. They are now done. I'm gonna get the cilantro. All right, so I'm gonna put some cilantro on. I did taste the filling and, well, after it was cooked, obviously. 
um, and it turned out really delicious. So would definitely recommend this recipe there. Uh, it's actually, I think there's a couple different iterations of it in the book. So definitely um, try it out if you have it. The rice turned out really tender and um, the meat mixture is definitely really good. So five stars would recommend. I wanna take a second and thank Thrive Market for sponsoring today's video. They have been a longtime supporter of my channel and I love working with them because I truly do love ordering from their website. They make it so easy and so inexpensive to get good quality ingredients delivered right to your door. You don't even have to leave your couch. I have done price comparisons between the items they have on their site and the items in my regular grocery store and uh, so many times they are cheaper and shipping is free when you spend greater than $49. The reason I also like their service is because I can get specialty ingredients not only at a great cost but I can also get ingredients um, that I wouldn't normally be able to get in my regular grocery store because I live in a small town. If you guys want to try out Thrive they have a couple different membership options. You can do a month to month membership for $9.95 a month, or they have a 12-month membership for $5 a month, um, which is billed annually, and that is the one that I do because I order from them a couple different times a month. They also have a Thrive Gives program, so they do donate a membership to either a first responder or a veteran or a low-income family for every membership that is purchased, so I love their mission, but if you guys want to try out Thrive Market, I'll have a link in the description box below. You can go to thrivemarket.com slash genchange. You guys are going to get 25% off your first order as well as a free gift. So make sure that you check that out. All right. So the next recipe that I'm going to share with you guys is meatballs and marinara in the slow cooker. So I'm pretty excited to see how this turns out. I'm actually going to be giving this to uh, my in-laws as kind of a housewarming present because they just moved and I actually don't even think they have a stove yet. So this will be nice for them to have um, a hot dinner. So I'll show you kind of when I pack that up, how I do that. But um, what you'll need is some Parmesan cheese. Uh, an onion, one egg, two cloves of garlic, some thyme, uh, some tomato paste. I actually showed you guys the tomato paste in the pepper recipe and I don't think I needed it for that, so sorry about that. Uh, but this is from um, Thrive Market and I do like, like I said, the jar packaging. Some olive oil. Back here I have some salt and pepper. Um, you'll need a can of crushed tomatoes. So I got these from Thrive, the organic uh, crushed tomatoes, a 28 ounce can of those, and then also some tomato puree, which I had this in my freezer so I just thawed that out and I'll be using that some milk two slices of white bread some ground beef and then for the sauce some dry red wine if you want to leave this out if you don't you know use alcohol in your cooking I think that would be totally fine as well so the first thing that we're gonna do again in this recipe is microwave our onions and garlic and I will acknowledge that this recipe does have um, a few more steps than like a traditional you know dump and go <laughs> slow cooker recipe does but I think that the benefit of cooking any slow cooker meal is that you can prep it ahead of time right so it it kind of alleviates some of that like stressful dinner rush a little bit so even if you do have to do you know some prep on the front end I think it can still be um, beneficial to cook things like this in the slow cooker now I am cutting this recipe in half because the original recipe makes enough for two pounds of pasta and I'm just gonna be cooking one so you can keep that in mind too all right so two cloves of garlic all right and then I need about one tablespoon of tomato paste eyeball that about one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil by the way this one that I get from Thrive is one of my favorites I always keep this tin of it by my stove I think it looks pretty too okay so I actually misread the recipe um, I told you guys that you needed thyme but you actually need oregano which makes way more sense so I'm gonna have to use dried oregano I'm gonna add a little bit of salt in here let me grab the oregano and then just one teaspoon of dried oregano that's something I should grow in my garden actually now that I think about that all right so I'm gonna stir this up and then the directions are to microwave this for five minutes and then we're actually gonna use half of this in the marinara sauce and half of it in the meatballs all right so while that's in the microwave I'm gonna work on the ground beef mixture so I have a pound of ground beef here I'm just gonna tear up my bread in that and then add the milk and we'll kind of start to combine everything together all right I'm gonna add a little bit of salt the bread that I'm using for all of these recipes is the Sara Lee 
artisano bread. That's always the brand that I buy when I, like when I have to make breadcrumbs or um, anything like that, I always buy that white bread because I think it's like the really good high quality um, white bread and it's just, it's very, very soft so it works well for stuff like this. The next thing that I'm going to do is just add one egg yolk. The original recipe calls for two but I'm just gonna add one. I'm cutting it in half. About a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. I have this fresh Parmesan cheese in my fridge, so that's what I'm gonna use, but I think you could totally use the pre-shredded Parmesan if that's what you have. Um, also, I will link or type out all of these recipes in the description box below if you guys wanna try them as well. A couple of you have let me know that you purchased this cookbook and you really like it, so I always love hearing that because you know I'm just such a cookbook junkie. All right, and I do have some fresh parsley here. I happen to have that on hand, so I'm gonna mince some of that up and add it to the meatballs as well. Okay, so my onions are done microwaving, so I'm gonna give those a stir. Um, I'm just gonna put, I'll just put a couple of spoonfuls of those in the meatballs and then we'll save the rest for the sauce. Okay, so now we can mix up the meatball mixture and spill everything all over the place, of course. <laughs> I will say this is a little bit more work than other recipes, uh, meatball recipes that I've made, which I feel like sometimes happens with America's Test Kitchen recipes, but honestly, I have never tried a bad recipe from them. They have never let me down. So if it tastes good, it's worth it. All right, so the next step is to par cook the meatballs in the oven. So my opinion on this is that I totally think that you could roll these meatballs and put them into the slow cooker with the sauce and just have them cook in the sauce. So maybe next time that might be how I do it. But um, in the spirit of making the recipe as written the first time, I'm just gonna go ahead and cook them in the oven. So I just have a baking sheet here that I covered with foil just to kind of help keep it a little bit cleaner. And then I put a cooking rack on the top of that, sprayed it with canola oil spray just to help keep the meatballs from sticking. And we should get about 12 meatballs out of this um, pound of ground beef. One thing I will say though about baking meatballs in the oven is that it is much cleaner, you know, like less messy than doing them on the stovetop when they kind of splatter all over the place. So I actually ended up with 15, so. That'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna put these in the oven for about 10 minutes while we make the sauce. And sometimes I get questions about where I get my racks that fit in my pans. And honestly, I just got these at Walmart. So I think you can just find any sheet tray <laughs> that you like that has a lip on it and any rack that fits in there and it'll work just fine. Okay, so I've got my slow cooker liner here. I'm gonna add the remaining cooked onions from we did those before. And then to that, we just need to add the wine and the tomatoes. Open my can of crushed tomatoes. And then this is equivalent to about a 14 ounce can of tomato puree. And then lastly, some red wine. So I was thinking about this, actually, this is a dry red wine, which is what this particular recipe calls for. It's just a blend. Um, if you don't have red wine or you don't cook with wine, I think what I would recommend doing is using a couple tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. I think it would give that sort of same flavor. Um, for white wine, a lot of times I recommend either adding like lemon juice or white vinegar or even like chicken broth mixed with a little bit of vinegar depending on the amount that you need. So for this particular recipe, it calls for a half a cup. So we're just gonna need a quarter and then we'll give this a stir. All right, so meatballs are done cooking. I'm just gonna place those into the sauce. It says to nestle them in the mm -hmm. sauce. So they do smell fabulous, I'll, I'll tell you that much. Okay, I'm just gonna use my spoon to kind of make sure these are covered up. And then this is gonna cook on a low for about five hours. Um, and then at the end, we'll taste the sauce and see what it needs. Um, it does recommend adding maybe a few teaspoons of sugar to the sauce at the end if it's not sweet enough, um, and salt and pepper as well. Okay, so here is the uh, boiling water. I'm gonna make this spaghetti for the spaghetti meatballs, so I'm gonna salt this water. And then this is um, a really good quality pasta that you can get from Thrive. I've tried different shapes of this before and it's really, really good. So I'm gonna use the regular uh, spaghetti. Would definitely recommend this brand. I can't find it in my store and it's really good quality. All right, so I've got my pasta in there and then um, you can also get
get these Essential Baking Company loaves of bread um, on Thrive Market and they're really good. I've been using these for a while now. So all you have to do is remove it from the package and then you place it right on the oven rack and heat it up. So I'm gonna make this with the spaghetti as well. All right, so we're gonna check on the marinara sauce and meatballs. So I did taste this after it simmered for a little while and I added a little bit of sugar. I think the recipe called for two teaspoons, which is, which is about what I added. Um, some salt and I tasted it and it turned out really good. I would recommend this sauce recipe because it tastes really fresh. You know how sometimes like jarred sauces, I mean, they're still good, but they just don't have that like fresh tomato taste, but this really does. So this this is done now. I'm just gonna wait for the spaghetti to be done also. Okay, so here's what I did with the bread. Once I removed it from the oven, I just used a really sharp um, serrated knife to kind of cut some slices in it. And then I just tucked some tucked some butter in there. So this is actually a garlic and herb butter. So it's like pre-seasoned um, that I got from Aldi. So I'm gonna wrap this up in foil and then the spaghetti's done. So I just need to drain that and put it all together. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do with the spaghetti and meatballs. So I put the spaghetti on the bottom. This is just like a freezer tray that I got from um, Costco. I get these in big packs. So I have the spaghetti underneath and then I just put the sauce with the meatballs on top. So I'm gonna cover this with foil and then I'll add the bread with it and also give them some Parmesan cheese. Yum. Next up, slow cooker meatloaf. And yes, I'm a little excited about this. Are you guys team meatloaf or no? I actually really like meatloaf if it's like cooked properly in my opinion. Uh, we're gonna see. I'm not usually a huge fan of like onions in my meatloaf, but we're gonna give it a shot. So uh, what you'll need for this recipe is some apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of brown sugar. I went ahead and pre-chopped my onion and I chopped it really, really fine or as fine as I could with a knife because I wanna make sure that I don't have like a lot of texture in the actual meatloaf. Um, you also need some ketchup. I'm going to use this primal ketchup from Thrive Market. It's really good and it has no added sugar in it. It. It's um, also like paleo and Whole30 compatible if you're looking for that. I have some olive oil, some milk, uh, a couple, you'll need, well, I actually don't know how much you'll need. Um, <laughs> I need to look at the recipe, but some uh, Dijon mustard. I also get this from Thrive. Some Worcestershire sauce, two eggs, two slices of white bread, some thyme, some parsley, salt and pepper. And then the recipe calls for a meatloaf mix, which is actually a mixture of beef, pork, and veal. I cannot find ground veal around where I live, so I'm just using a combination of ground pork and ground beef. All right, so the first thing that we'll need to do is to microwave the onions and the thyme and some oil. I'm gonna attempt to pull most of these leaves off. I think there, isn't there like a herb like thing you can get that like strips the leaves off? I feel like I need to get that because I'm not very good at it. And then I end up chopping up some of the stems as well, but most of the time it doesn't really matter all that much. If you don't have fresh thyme on hand, you can use dried. I'm sure it would be fine. I normally actually don't have fresh thyme <laughs> on hand. The only reason I bought this was for a different recipe, uh, like a roasted chicken recipe that I was cooking. All right, so about two teaspoons of that, and then I'm gonna add about one tablespoon of olive oil, stir, and I'm going to microwave this for about five minutes. All right, so I've got my onions softened in here. I'm going to tear up my bread and add that along with the milk and get that mashed up. I was kind of thinking it might have been easier to um, kind of process the bread in the food processor a little bit, but then it just dirties the food processor and like who wants to deal with that, right? All right, I'm gonna add two eggs to this. And the reason why I'm adding it in this bowl rather than in with the meat is so I can stir everything together. Um, otherwise, if you kind of add the whole eggs to the meat mixture, it takes a while to get everything incorporated. All right, next I'm gonna mince up some parsley. You know, I just, I wanna mention in a lot of these recipes where fresh herbs are used, I know that sometimes, you know, purchasing these can be kind of cost prohibitive, especially if you're only gonna use it for, <laughs> you know, one recipe or a couple different recipes. So definitely feel free to substitute dried herbs, you know, where it makes sense. I think in a recipe like this, dried parsley would totally be fine. Um, obviously I'm trying to make it according to the original recipe, but if I didn't have it on hand, I would totally use dried as well. Okay, so I've got that mixed in with the meat and then I do need to add 
a couple more things. All right, so I need two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Fun fact, it was a long time after I started my YouTube channel that I could say Worcestershire. He says say Worcestershire a lot. It would always give me crap for it. That's about right. All right, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Adam told me the other day that he really loves <laughs> this mustard, so I should keep buying it. So would recommend that if you want to try out Thrive. And then one and a half teaspoons of salt and about half a teaspoon of pepper. Normally, as you have seen me cook many times, I do not measure my salt. <laughs> my salt and pepper. Um, I think it's just one of those things where after you have, you know, cooked for a while, you kind of get the feel of, of how much you need to add. And you know, cooking is like anything else. You get better as you do it more. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna do is basically make a sling to place the meatloaf on so that we can transfer it to the slow cooker. All right, so I've got two pieces of foil here that I've kind of folded for more for stability. I'm gonna place the meatloaf right here and then we'll form it into a loaf and transfer it to the slow cooker. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so here's the moment of truth. I assume this will be fairly easy, but we'll see. I'm using my larger slow cooker here just because I figured that since it was two pounds of meat. Yeah, that's not too bad, right? All right, so now we need to make the glaze. So the glaze is ketchup, apple cider vinegar, and brown sugar. All right, so I've got a measuring cup here because I do need half a cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and then I'm just gonna use this to eyeball two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. All right, and then we'll give this a whisk. So this is interesting. At the end, it wants you to take it out and broil it, so we're gonna try it. We're doing it for science. Okay, so here's my meatloaf. It says to pour half of this mixture onto the meatloaf, and then we'll save the other half for when it's done. So I'm kind of just gonna use my whisk to spread this out a little bit. I don't, this isn't the best tool to do this. Don't do as I say, not as I do. All right, so here's my meatloaf. So this is gonna go into the slow cooker. It says three hours on low, so I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so this is what our meatloaf looks like after it's done cooking in the slow cooker. So what I'm gonna do now is use this foil sling to remove this to a baking sheet, and then I'm going to brush the rest of the glaze on and broil it for about five minutes. Okay, so glaze is on, I've got the broiler on. I'm not always the best at using the broiler. Because sometimes I forget it's on. But it's six inches from the element and I'm gonna broil this for about five minutes. All right, so this is how the meatloaf turned out after I broiled it. So I'm actually going to uh, offer this to my grandparents, I think. I might take it over there tomorrow so that they can have dinner. I'll probably make some mashed potatoes with it. But I wanted to tell you, I did cut off the end so that I could taste it because I wanted to tell you guys if it was a good recipe or not. And yes, I 100% recommend this method slash recipe for cooking meatloaf. It is a winner and um, I'm definitely gonna make it again because I'm gonna give this one away to them. So the next thing we are making is chili mac and I'm very excited about this because I don't believe I've ever made a proper chili mac in the slow cooker. Uh, the times I've made chili mac, I literally just mixed chili with cooked macaroni, which is delicious, but we're gonna try this recipe. So you'll need um, a can of tomato sauce, a can of crushed tomatoes. These come in two packs from Thrive, so this is the other can from the order I just got. Salt, pepper, this is called a panade, which is what we've been doing doing with the bread and the milk. So it's one slice of white bread mixed with two tablespoons of milk and mashed together. One onion, some garlic cloves, some shredded pepper jack cheese, one pound of elbow macaroni, some chili powder, some cumin, and then in my slow cooker here, I've got one pound of ground beef. This particular multi-cooker is a Kasori brand, and it does happen to have a saute along with a slow cook function. So does an instant pot, so you could use that as well. I've tried to find links to this, and it's been discontinued, so I apologize that I can't. But like I said, instant pot also has both the saute and the slow cooker function, or you could also do this on a stove and then put it in the slow cooker. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is chop up our onion. So I feel like the unique thing about this recipe is that it has you mash in the milk and the bread with the beef. 
and then cook it in a skillet. Like I've never done it that way before, so it's just kind of a different technique, I guess you could say. Do you guys cry when you chop onions? I usually don't, actually. I don't know why that is. Does it matter, too, if you wear glasses or contacts? Because I feel like when I used to wear contacts a lot, it used to happen to me, but now that I wear glasses more often, I don't really get that. So this original recipe calls for two onions, but this it was a rather large one, so I'm just gonna use one because I don't really see the need for two whole onions. I'm gonna add this to the slow cooker. And this beef, I won't need to drain. This is beef from um, a local farmer that we get meat from, and when they process it, it's like 90% lean, so necessary to drain it. All right, so I've got my slow cooker on saute, and I'm just gonna add this panade, I guess. I should have been saying it was a panade the whole time, but I didn't realize that. And then I'm kind of just gonna try and mash it in with the meat a little bit. The thing about this multi-cooker is that I will say it doesn't have a super high temperature of sauteing. Like it will obviously cook the ground beef, but it'll take just a little bit. This is totally my kind of cookbook because they call for a lot of garlic and I do love me some garlic. I actually bought a bag of, oh my God, I'm getting weak. <laughs> I actually bought a bag of um, the pre-peeled garlic cloves. All right, so to the beef, I'm gonna add about a quarter teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then I'm just gonna let this saute and when it's all cooked through, we will add the seasonings. Okay, so I finished cooking the beef and onion mixture and then I added the macaroni. It actually said to like saute the macaroni for a little bit, I guess to cook it I'm not sure um, the next thing I'm going to do is add three tablespoons of chili powder and then four teaspoons of cumin I give that a stir okay next I'm gonna add the tomatoes so one like 14 ounce can of tomato sauce and then one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes okay and then I'm gonna add about two and a half cups of water and it says you can add more um, if you need to that will obviously you know the the pasta is gonna cook and soak the water up so give this a stir okay and then the last thing is just one cup of the pepper jack cheese stir that in and then we're just gonna cook this on high for one to two hours you basically just have to cook it until the macaroni is tender all right I'll show you what it looks like when it's done all right so chili mac is done we're gonna give it a stir smells really good yum this makes a lot too this would feed let's see how many servings does it say oh it says six to eight yeah for sure this would be a good meal to make if you have teenagers in your house right <laughs> They're gonna eat all this in no time flat. All right, I'm gonna give this a little taste. Um, the only thing you need to do is just scoop it out onto a plate and you can top it with more um, pepper jack if you want. I think it would also be good topped with sour cream um, or cilantro. Okay, so I garnished this with the remaining um, shredded pepper jack cheese and some cilantro. I'll also probably serve this with some sour cream if folks want it. Um, the flavor is really, really good. It's definitely has a spice to it, but I don't think it's like overly spicy. One thing I would recommend is that I probably left this in the slow cooker a little too long, like I left it on keep warm um, for a couple hours after it finished and it still tastes really good but the macaroni is like I would say a little bit mushy so if you're gonna make this recipe definitely just eat it right away otherwise I would totally recommend it I almost think it would be good too with some beans in it if you like beans like even just substituting half of the ground beef with like some drained um, you know chili beans I think would be good because to me that reminds me <laughs> of chili mac but anyway this recipe is definitely a keeper I would definitely make it again I think also one thing I want to say too is if you didn't want it so spicy like for kids you could definitely substitute like cheddar cheese or plain Monterey Jack cheese instead of pepper jack. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed these recipes. Like I said, I will have them all linked in the description box below. Don't forget to check out Thrive Market if you would like a discount and a free gift with your first order. The link is thrivemarket.com slash Jen Chapin. Let me also know in the comments if you want to try any of these recipes and which one you are looking forward to trying. Thanks so much for being here and for your support and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.